internet, this is Alex Chan and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're looking at the first topic in GCSE Economics 1.11, which is economic activity. But first, let's start with the thought experiment about needs and wants. I want you to picture something in your head. Let's say you could only have one thing in the entire world. What would it be? Think of that thing. I'm going to try and guess it, okay? Got it? That's good. Okay, now I'm going to try and guess it, okay? I'm going to mind read. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. This is just going to be a guess. I could go with something flashy, like, I don't know, like a PS5 or like a PS6. Maybe there's a PS6 when you're around, there's not one yet. Or you could have gone with, I don't know, like a flat screen TV or something like that. But no, I'm going to go with something a lot more simple, like food. Did you choose food? Or water? If you didn't, then great, you can differentiate between needs and wants. Well, actually, you might have just said food because you're hungry. Yum. But anyway, if you did choose something like an Xbox, think it through. I said you could only have one thing in the entire world, and you chose Xbox. But what would you really want? What would you really need? An Xbox or food? Remember, you can only have one thing. And if you think it through carefully, you should always follow your needs before you go for luxurious items, your wants, like the Xbox. This is why it's really good to be able to think through your needs and wants, which is why that's what one of the parts that we're going to be going through in economic activity in today's video. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's start today's topic with the needs and wants, which is what we were talking about in the intro, okay? But what it says here in the actual syllabus is a need is something needed to survive and a want is something desired but not essential. Also, by the way, these men that just pop up to show definitions, it will be coming through throughout the entire of the GCSE economic status. Anyway, so that's what it says. So need is something needed to survive and want is something desired but not essential. So that seems pretty basic, right? But if you actually start to think about it, it starts getting a bit complicated. So you might be thinking right now, this is really easy, I know what need and want is, but you really need to practice. So, let me ask you, is food a need or a want? A need, right? Not always. Think. So, yes, food is needed to survive, but is ice cream essential? Ice cream is food, but none of us would really call it a need, it's just something that's desired, but you don't really need to eat it. So, as you can see, it starts getting a bit harder to discern between when you get more specific um, with objects. Now, the second thing we need to talk about with needs and wants is that these can change over time. So, for example, if we go really way back, I don't know, like in, in the 1300s, their needs and wants would be a lot different. So, if you went up to someone in the 1300s and asked them, what do you want? And then they would say, uh, I don't know, like, um, 20 acres of land, uh, good crop, I don't know. Um, but they wouldn't say what we would say nowadays, I don't know, like, iPhone X, Xbox, a, a cool flashy car, stuff like that. You wouldn't have that in, in the 1300s. And you can see how these needs and wants would change over time. So that's pretty basic as well. Okay, so uh, we're moving on to the second thing, after needs and wants, which is the central purpose of economic activity. That's what it's labelled. It's not that difficult, it's just what is the economy for? So the main purpose of it is to know what to produce. So the economy serves a purpose to produce goods and services to satisfy the people in that economy's needs and wants. So all economies work differently. So the UK economy would be a lot different from something like Vietnam. And I think we would all like agree that, for example, the UK economy is doing a lot better and working out um, the, the purpose of the economy is working a lot better to satisfy our needs and wants and allowing us to gain more from it. Okay, the third thing in this category still is the key economic decisions. So there's three of them. There's what to produce, how to produce it, and who gets it. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so the first one, uh, what to produce, okay? So this is pretty simple. Um, mostly people are quite free to produce what they want. But usually they, especially in capitalism, usually people produce what other people want, otherwise there's no point in producing it because no one's going to buy it unless you yourself want it. Um, but a lot of the time government gets involved in how to produce and what to produce. So, for example, um, cars. Um, in the US there's lots of strict regulation as 
the same as other like European countries and other countries, obviously. And it's like safety protocols, like the car can't emit this amount of gas or, and stuff. And this just tells producers what to produce and how to produce the thing that they're producing. So let's move on to the how to produce. This is mostly satisfied by capitalism using the invisible hand, right? Um, it's because um, people following their own self-interest help other people. So as a producer, you'd like to lower your costs so that you can earn more profit and also sell at a lower price so that people buy from you as well. So by finding the most cost-effective production possible, we help work out the best way to produce at the lowest cost. However, however, the government can again get involved with the production of things like a TV factory could produce TVs and it's very cost effective, but they emit loads of fumes, etc. Which is why governments sometimes give subsidies and taxes on like emissions. Okay, the last key economic decision, which is who gets it, is probably one of the most easy to like work out and understand. It's basically, uh, I'm just doing it in capitalism because that's probably the most easiest to understand. It's whoever pays most gets it. So if I wanted a pizza and there's let's say one pizza and the guy's selling his pizza and I'll just go up to him and say, oh, I'll pay you five pounds for that pizza, right? He might take that offer, but let's say my brother walks along and he says, oh, actually, I, I like that pizza more than my brother. I'll, I'm willing to pay for it for 10 pounds. Then obviously that producer will pay it to him because he's he wants it more by, he shows that he wants it more by paying more. He values that pizza more. And this is, again, um, one of the aspects of capitalism, which is really great. It helps people who really want a, a product to get um, the product that they want because they're willing to pay more for it. A quick side note here, which is quite uh, amusing. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you find it amusing, but basically there was an economist, I can't remember what his name was, but he basically uh, said, rejected the entire prospect of gift giving because he was saying like, by gift giving, you're giving people um, things that they might not value as much as someone else who's willing to pay the same amount, right? So actually, if you think about it, the best um, gift to give at Christmas, economically speaking, is just cash, because then they can go and buy what they actually want. But obviously, um, that doesn't really factor in like fostering love and etc. Anyway, back to what we're actually supposed to be doing. Okay, the main economic groups are the consumers, which is like us buying from the shop, the producers, which are again the like like farmers, I don't know, factory producers and stuff like that, and the government. They're the main groups, and they interact um, all all together. And um, we can go. There's actually there's something called the circular flow model that I'll probably make a future video on, and that just shows all the interactions of all these groups, uh, which also includes like the financial system, etc. But mainly, you just need to know that this the way they interact is like consumers buy from producers who um, produce items, the government taxes them, etc. And this is all in the circular flow matrix. Anyway, that's it for today. And next week, we'll be going over the factors of production. Actually, in probably like three days, we'll be going over the factor of production, which is 1.12 in the GCSE economics. I'll see you then. See you next time. Hi guys, I just wanted to end this video by saying thank you so much for the support by just watching my video and also please like this video just to show you that you enjoy my content and I'll continue making these videos which helps, hopefully helps you. And make sure also to, to subscribe so that you get notified when I make these GCC economic videos and other videos so you can subscribe right here and the next video which hopefully I'll make in three days is here. I'll see you next time.